responsibility to discern what sin is and not be afraid to point it out. There's a big difference. This is folk, folk, no, folk compassion that I'm seeing and hearing these days. It brings in the no condemnation of the sinner, but there's no condemnation of the sin either. That's not God's way as I understand Scripture. Try, try reading Patriarchs and Prophets and see how that one works out for you. It doesn't work. You'll have to go to some kind of airy-fairy uh, New Age so-called Christian to get that kind of understanding of God's compassion because it's not in Scripture. Yes, Jesus said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. But he also said, go in what? Yes, yes there's a terrible flaw in the Pharisees' logic. Turn your eyes to the other side of the court. The Pharisee had gotten as close to the temple as he could. But we know that the tax collector only steps inside the precincts, outside precincts of the temple. Because scripture says standing afar off. Facing in his shoes, being in his chest, not like Tarzan, but in humility. Unlike the Pharisee, the criminal tax collector knows he cannot play games with God. He has nothing to bring and he claims no merit except a repentant heart. Came across a great, at least for me, at least my understanding, understanding of repentance. And it's exemplified here. This actually came from a Jewish rabbi, this definition. I'm going to try to remember. I was going to write it down, but this is a paraphrase. He said, this Jewish rabbi said, true repentance is when you have a personal divine encounter with God and you see the contrast between Him and you. It's not about, oh, I repent because I offended my wife. That's part of it. But a greater part of it is well, the way Joseph expressed himself when he said, how can I do this great sin? Not against myself, not against Potiphar, not against Potiphar's wife, but against who? God. He had an encounter with God. Amen. And that's why we're told that as we get closer to seeing Jesus come by Ellen, she said our repentance will deepen because our encounter with God will be deeper. And it's not this gospel light God that I'm hearing I'm really concerned about. No, no, no. no it's, a, it's a holy God. It's a holy God who loves absolutely, but he hates sin absolutely as well. Amen. Oh, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Sounds kind of like the thief on the cross a little later, doesn't it? Lord, remember me. No fancy prayer. No fancy prayer. No fancy sinner's prayer or 29 Bible study guide hoops to jump through. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I want to close with looking at three meanings for him being in your chest. Just a chest. That really got to me. I believe the first reason he beat his chest because he truly was repentant. He had this divine encounter that I just referenced. Secondly, he's saying it's all on me. I don't blame the way I was raised. I don't blame my spouse. I don't blame my church. I don't blame this or that or that person or that person. It's on me. It's on me. All of our all of my righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. It says he beat, he hits his breast, he hits his his breast, which is what's behind the breast? Heart. Your heart. I believe Jesus is implicitly telling us that true conversion is not a prop, 
not a matter of jumping through the right hoops. Okay, I did this, so we can baptize him now. Jesus is saying, no, no, no. True conversion is in the heart. Amen. It's a heart change. The heart change <coughs> follows or precedes, I should say, a life change. Yes, both men came to the temple as dead ducks. I, the one, was raised from the dead to walk in newness of life, while the other one stayed, unfortunately, sadly, dead in his sin. Yes, he doesn't allow the criticism of the Pharisee to discourage him. Have you ever been discouraged and said, I'm not going to church, I'm not going to fellowship because other people have been critical of me? Go see the publican. He would not allow the criticism of the Pharisee. Because I'm sure he heard the Pharisee say, I'm so glad I'm not like him. But he wouldn't allow that to deter him from his encounter with God. He comes to encounter a holy God with nothing and leaves with everything. Christ alone was the publican's total sufficiency. So I close with a question. First for me, is Christ my total efficiency and sufficiency? And I say, that's the same of you. Is he yours? I pray he is. Father in heaven, I close with joy in my breast. Because we don't have to stay dead ducks. Oh, we may have been in church for four years. Sitting here faithfully but dead ducks. May we have a direct encounter as the publican did. For we're told that he went home justified by faith. That be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 295. If you will please stand with me.
our delay, to cease that delay through the conformity of our lives to yours. And we love you. We thank you for your patience, your mercies which are new every morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.